So in this next module, we're going to kind of change modes here. And for the rest of the week, we're going to be talking about the writing process itself. So this is very important because how you approach writing can really influence sort of your enjoyment of the whole process and it can really influence how your piece comes out at the end of the day. So I really like to put a lot of emphasis on um, talking about the writing process. And really, this can apply to any type of writing that you might be doing, not just scientific manuscripts. Uh, but for scientific manuscripts, what I'm really talking about here today is when you've already done your experiments and you've got your data, you've got your you know, data organized in some way, and at that point, now you're ready to write up a manuscript around uh, that set of experiments and that set of data. So what do you do then? Well, um, there's kind of two uh, things that I think happen when you get to that stage. So a lot of people, when they get to that stage, it's like, okay, I've got my experience, I've got my data, I really want to brush this to publication, maybe it's you know something that um, I want to publish first. So some people will say, great, I'm ready to write, and the next day, or right, you know, the minute after they get their data all set up, they're going to jump right into, they pop open the computer, the pop open the Word document, and jump into writing. So just to you know, get right into it, they're gonna, gonna barrel right through it. So that's one approach. Um, another very common approach is that people will get all of their experiments and their data is all done. They're, they're ready to write the manuscript, but it'll sit on their desk for a really, really long time. So um, you know, they'll find the seven other things that they have to do that are more important, and it'll sit there for weeks and weeks and weeks, even months, and won't get done. They'll procrastinate on it. So actually, I think both of those approaches are flawed. I'm going to tell you why. So. Um, and so hopefully, um, some of the tips I'm going to give you today are going to explain why I think uh, both of those approaches are a little bit flawed. So um, when I think of the writing process, I actually like to break it into three distinct phases. And I really like to separate these three phases in my head. And I'm going to encourage you to kind of separate these three things and think of them as distinct. And I'll tell you why. So. Um, I think the way that a lot of people write actually is to convolute all of those three steps and that leads to all sorts of problems that I'm going to talk about. So for me, the writing process has these three distinct phases. So there's what I call the pre-writing phase. So that's the, when you're collecting and synthesizing and organizing all your facts, your information that's going to go into your uh, piece or your manuscript. You're working out uh, the take-home messages. You're kind of figuring out the flow of ideas and the organization. So a lot of people skip that step, right? They just, as I mentioned earlier, they just jump right into writing the manuscript and they don't do any kind of pre-writing like that. They think it's more efficient, and I, I guarantee you it's not, but they think it's more efficient to just jump right into writing. Um, but I like to actually separate that phase out because what happens is a lot of people, again, kind of convolute the pre-writing and the writing. So if you don't take time to do the pre-writing step and you jump right into opening the blank Word document on your computer, you end up convoluting pre-writing and writing. And it looks something like this. So um, you, okay, today I'm going to write my introduction section. So I pop open the blank Word document. And the first sentence is kind of general, so I write the first sentence. Okay, now I get to the second sentence. Oh, uh, I need that specific statistic that's in that paper by Jones et al. So now I gotta find that statistic. So what am I gonna do? Okay, I don't have it at my fingertips because I haven't done my pre-writing step. So I'm gonna toggle over to PubMed, try to find that paper. Oh, I can't find it in PubMed. So I'm gonna jump over to Google, good old Google. I, I, found, the, I found the paper in Google. Pop open the PDF. Oh, the, the statistic is not in the abstract. I gotta kind of rifle through the PDF. Finally, I find the statistic, oh, it's 15%. Now I'm going to pop that statistic and that reference into my ongoing draft. And uh, notice that at this point, it's taken you about 20, 30 minutes to write two sentences. So that is a very painful and inefficient way to write. And in fact, what that person was doing, it wasn't writing at all. They were just fishing for information, collecting information. And so when you convolute those two steps, it leads you to write in this very inefficient manner. Not only that, but because they're kind of paying attention to one detail at a time, what often happens is they kind of lose the big picture scope of the story. They haven't organized it or thought it out, and they come out with something that's very, very disorganized. 
And of course, also when you're toggling over to Google or PubMed, there's a tendency to get distracted, right? You're taking your focus away from writing, and writing is something that takes a lot of focus and energy. But once you're over to Google, well, you might as well go to Amazon and order those supplies you need. You might as well go check your email. You might as well get to Facebook, right? You, get, you end up being distracted. So I encourage uh, students to actually do what I call this pre-writing step, to get, go through, get all your information, organize it, get your information at your fingertips, kind of lay out what's going to go in your piece ahead of time before you open up that blank Word document. So that's the pre-writing step. The writing the first draft, that this is when you actually get at the computer, open up that blank Word document, and you compose prose. And that step for most people is the most difficult. That's the hardest thing for most people to do is to actually write prose, you know, in front of the computer. And so um, I'm going to give you some tips to, ho to help improve, to help make that step a little bit easier, hopefully. And then the, the third step is the revision. That's after you've written a first draft, you go back and you revise it to make it sound better. Now, again, a lot of people convolute steps two and three here. That is, they try to write and revise at the same time, and that also leads to inefficient uh, and problematic writing. So that looks like something like, uh, you know, a lot of students tell me, um, I can't move on to the next sentence until I get the last sentence perfect. They just refuse to move on until everything is perfect. And I used to be guilty of this, too, so I understand the impulse to want to, like, be a perfectionist. Uh, but the problem with that is it, it takes a really long time to write because it takes you forever to go on to one sentence. So you're not going to get that first draft down quickly and efficiently. And uh, you're also losing sight again of the big picture of just trying to get the ideas down, get them organized. And you, again, end up with something that's disorganized and it's a really painful writing process. So those are the three steps. I'm going to go through each one of these in a separate module because I think it's so important to talk about the details of these. Uh, but for now, I want you to kind of think about your own writing process. Reflect on your own writing process. And think about proportionally, like if you've got 30 hours that it takes you to write a manuscript, about what percent of the time do you spend in each one of those steps, pre-writing versus writing versus revision. So take a minute and reflect on that. Think about how you allocate your time. If you need, you can even pause the video for a moment and, and kind of go through, you know, evaluate your own writing process. So for most students, I actually think, uh, you know, and I've polled students on this before, most students tell me that they spend the majority of their time on step number two, the writing step. Well, that makes sense, right? It's the writing process we're talking about, so don't you spend the most, most of your time writing, right? That's what everybody would think. Um, so the emphasis tends to be on that writing step, and people think that they're spending a lot of time writing, and they, and they may very well be. They're spending a lot of time at the computer doing something that they think is writing. Of course, again, it might be convoluting with one of these other steps. So I'm going to try to shake up your writing process a little bit uh, and tell you what I think, roughly what I think you should be aiming for in terms of how you allocate your time. So this may surprise some of you. So this is what I think it should be roughly, and, and these percentages are not exact. I'm just using them to kind of give you a sense of where I think you should emphasize putting your time. So I really think that you need to spend a lot of time pre-writing. In fact, the majority of your time should be spent in this pre-writing phase. And I'm going to talk in great de detail about what should happen there in the next module. But getting ready to write, getting organized, getting your information at your fingertips. Then notice that I allocated the very little, smallest amount of time to writing the first draft. Now, that may surprise some of you because here I am, a writing teacher, telling you to spend the last time writing. But, but what I'm trying to get at here is that I want you to start writing in a way that it's very efficient, where you're writing quickly because you're ready to write and you're not trying to revise at the same time. You're getting that first draft down quickly, but in a nice, organized fashion. But spending less of the time in that step because that's the step that's the hardest. It takes the most focus and the most energy. And then finally, I've put 20% for revision because I want to emphasize the idea that you should be spending more time revising than you should writing the first draft. And probably a lot of you don't do that now. So I really want to put that emphasis on revision. Revision is where elegance happens in writing. So that's where your writing really becomes elegant. I'm going to show you some examples later. So um, this is probably roughly how I allocate my time when I am writing a piece. And you'll find exactly what works for you. It doesn't have to be exactly these percentages, but I've found that this is the most efficient way to write if I divide my time this way. 
So in the next couple of modules, I'm going to go through each of these steps and tell you exactly what should happen in each of those steps. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.